Hello guys. Hi guys. Welcome in Lazarski Talks. We are so happy to have you here with us again. Uh, it's a Monday, so it's a time for our meeting. Today we have an amazing guest. Uh, I know that most of you, you were expecting this kind of a guest. Uh, so our guest is Mr. Shimon Kukanov, and he is not only our tutor, uh, our lecturer, but as well is a psychologist. So today we are going to discuss uh, uh, issues related to our well-being, uh, to psychology, uh, how pandemic actually affected our well-being, our emotional health. So please stay tuned uh, for further meeting. Thank you very much for having me. I'm so thrilled to talk about it. I think those are very, very important topics. I also hope that some of uh, students which are attending my classes are here today. We I, I tried, I tried to promote it a little bit. So I hope that we will be able to spread a good word, mm -hmm. how to uh, help ourselves, how to maintain our mental health in good condition in these days. But let us start with the technical stuff. The first thing that we want to say that we all are Corona free. That's why we're not wearing any masks. We're touching each other, hugging each other, and we can talk and be very close to each other. So, we don't have any corona. Then, the second thing, if you want to say something, if you want to have a comment, please turn on the microphone and we're going to be more than happy to talk to you. You can, you have an ability to text uh, us too, and we see that you like this option more. However, in case of your willingness, we'll be happy to talk to you. And the last surprise that we have for you today, today person that is going to ask the most interesting question is going to receive an amazing surprise. There will be a prize for you guys. So we hope that you're going to be very active today, that your questions are going to be very interesting. And later on, you can pick your prize from downstairs uh, at the entry of Lazarski University. So enjoy our third episode of Lazarski Talks. And let's go through the subject many of our students, so you guys, uh, you wanted to discuss issues related to your well-being, to your uh, psychological, mental health at this time. Let's be honest, and, and we stressed this out uh, last time uh, in, in previous meeting, that many of us, and, and doesn't matter which age we are, mm -hmm. are, we, are we lecturers, are we uh, employees of the university, are we students, young people, um, all of us, we have enough, right? We are tired of the situation because of the reasons as, as well that were mentioned here. But what we wanted to discuss here are tips. How we can handle um, sadness, loneliness. Is it okay to feel yeah, that anxiety way? or homesickness, right? Many of our students are foreigners. Most of our students that we are actually conducting this material for, they are foreigners. They are very far away from their parents, from their friends. Uh, so they feel even more lonely while being here in Poland and studying online. So uh, what are the things uh, all of us, we can do uh, to handle the situation in the best possible way? Hmm. Is there any recipe? Uh, there isn't. There isn't. No, there isn't and there is, like always. Of course, there are always two sides. The, the, the glass is almost half full or half empty. I like to think about my mug as half full. So this is a question of attitude to some extent. But also uh, what is very, very important is what you actually started, is to notice what we are going through, what is happening with us, and to acknowledge that it is happening. So first of all, is to know ourselves a little bit, as I said, mm -hmm. to observe the change that is happening in us. Mm -hmm. If there is a change, acknowledge the change. So first point is to say, I'm actually in a difficult state, to be the least. If I'm sad and I know that I'm sad, I am sad. It is mm -hmm. important to allow ourselves to feel some weakness, to feel some feelings, some emotions we are not very excited about, but life, it's not always easy fix. Right. I mean, the 20th century, at, the, at, its, at, at its end especially, mm -hmm. brought some sort of concept that everything is very easy to fix and mm -hmm. we can fix everything. We are getting old, we can get uh, um, shot in our face and the wrinkles go out, go away. Well, unfortunately, some things cannot be fixed at all. Right. Some others cannot be fixed instantly. Right. And our emotions are one of these things that can, they cannot be fixed instantly. 
and sometimes they cannot be fixed at all. So first of all is acknowledging what I'm feeling, what is happening with me. Then once I know it, mm -hmm. why is that so? So we have to use our rational mind. I mean, we are all here intelligent people, studying, right. lecturing, I mean, we have lots developing. of developing, we have lots of cognitive capabilities. Mm -hmm. So let's use them. Mm -hmm. So if I notice that I'm feeling this, this and that, well, I don't like it. Okay, okay, take it easy. Why am I happy? Wh why is it happening to me? Mm -hmm. Well, it is happening to me because I've been living in extreme stress for past nine months. Okay, right. I know why, but I still don't feel better. You won't, not immediately at least, but mm -hmm. understanding the phenomena sometimes help us, helps us to see where are we. Again, as I said about the control, it helps us orientate in the situation. So once we orientated ourselves in the, ourselves in the situation, it is already a little bit easier because I know why it is happening to me. So this mm -hmm. is the first element. Then, of course, again, cognitive capabilities. Mm -hmm. What can I do about it? Is there something I can do about it? Well, there is nothing we can do about COVID. Does it make us feeling be feel better? Nah, not at all, really. I mean, so it's even worse. Yes, maybe it's even worse. But also, and I hope that most of you already had that sort of situations, and I really keep my, fin keep my fingers crossed for all of you who hadn't, because this is, I would say bliss in life if you live to up to up to I don't know 20 years old and you never experienced anything you can't change but there are things in our lives we cannot change right. and then the only possible way to deal with it is to accept it instead of ignoring it so okay I cannot change the fact that the COVID is there I'm accepting the fact COVID is there I have no influence on it whatsoever doing the next step not to leave you so empty-handed what is I can change because for sure there is number of things I can I may change what is it hmm okay for example I can change my sleeping habits I'm struggling some problems with sleep for example okay this is something I can influence this is my sleep mm -hmm. I can find some ways to deal with it what will be the ways structure very nice thing to use not so easy to launch in, in our lives. I'm struggling myself with the structure for over 40 years and most likely I, I hope I will be struggling with it for another 40 years. But the fact is we can structure our life a little bit at least. So make some rhythm that we go to a sleep on X time and wake up on Y time. Of course, it's perfect if between X and Y it's eight hours of sleep, but we have personal preferences. So adjust to it accordingly, of course. If, someone, mm -hmm. if for someone six hours is fair enough, Fair enough, stay with six. Putting the routines gives us control. Yes, yeah, safety. Safety. Prior to COVID, we had routines. School, parents, friends, number of stuff, sometimes work. Now the routine is gone mm -hmm. because the situation has changed. So let's imply some sort of routine on our life. We can't control, control COVID. We may control routine. Sleep, one thing. Another thing, physical activity. We are stuck at home for like 12 hours, 14 hours, as long as we stay, as we stay awake. Very often in a fairly limited space. Right, one room in the residence. One room in the residence. Dormitory or something, right. Beforehand, this one room was mostly bedroom, mm -hmm. sometimes right. for socializing. And of course, with computer for Netflix. But now it became workspace, it became studying space, it became whatever space, it became just smaller because part of it we gave away to university beforehand it was a class that university gave us now we gave to university our coffee table with laptop where we have the classes on so again physical activity to get out from this little space to get some fresh air and again make another point in the routine so we wake up well for morning people go outside and run cycle have a walk whatever do some physical activity not only for the mental health but also for physical help health i'm sure that quite some students of ours used to monitor their daily steps i i wonder how many of you did it recently noticing that you are doing one kilometer a day and af before the COVID, you've been doing like 12. Mm -hmm. so this 11 kilometer kilometers 
where are they? We have to fill it up somehow. You have to make your body moving as well. So structuring with number of activities, this is something that again helps us to regain some control, have a sensation mm -hmm. that I do something in my life that matters to me as well. So um, first thing is to take care of your physical activity, of your physical health with sleep, with proper food, with supplementing this food, having variety of food beforehand was some sandwiches at home, some, some, some lunch at canteen. Now it's all gone and it's sandwiches all day long. So try to adjust it somehow. Another element I would say, we still do have relationships. Let's rely on them. Let's use them. What we found in the research that among the activities people do to minimize the suffering, to minimize the negative effects of COVID, they really use the relationships. This is something that helps us all the time. Friends, parents, whoever it would be, colleague, doesn't matter. Right. We can have some possibilities to see what other people are going through, to reflect their emotions, to tell about our emotions. To, in order to do so, of course, we have to be able I would say to emotionally undress a little bit, to find in ourselves also again acceptance for the emotions we are finding mm -hmm. in ourselves and tell to others. Mm -hmm. Let's also remember that most likely we are not the only one who are going through this particular set of emotions. So sharing with others usually helps. Also when sharing, we give empathy. That again gives us some sensation of power because maybe the other person will share his her emotions with us. Maybe it will finish only on sharing, but maybe we will be able to put a different perspective to this person's personal situation mm -hmm. and add something to it. So this is mm -hmm. also something that is very valid and very, very important. Going farther with mindfulness. I mean, we've been, we've been listening about mindfulness for ages all your life, yeah. half mm -hmm. of my life. It was mm -hmm. about mindfulness, but which was just being developed, let's say. And people were reluctant to think about it at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. It became from, from <coughs> excuse me, from West to, to countries like Poland, and people at the beginning were hesitant. This is really amazing part of our life because with mindfulness, it's not only easier to recognize what is happening mm -hmm. with us, but also with mindfulness, we can be much more open to other people and be much more, much more helpful when, 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 when being in relationship, when sharing the experiences we are, mm -hmm. we are facing. I mean, what else? Let me think a second and right. take a breath. I so, just wanted yeah. to remind our students that the gyms are open at Lazarsk University for students. So you can actually sign and go and, you know, be active just a little bit. So please don't forget about that because a lot of students suffer from that. I know that they don't go out from the bedroom and this is, you know, the office, the like everything. Thankfully, not the toilet, but I'm not yes. sure about everyone. So. And small reminder, remember that you have PE classes and you have yes. to choose every semester the activity yes. you want to take part in. It can be yoga, it can be exercises that you are taking home for your spine or for something else. Really guys, it is important to keep your body, which is actually your home, home for your yeah. soul. It's, it's important to keep it healthy, right? Whatever we discussed. Sure. And personally, I believe there is no such thing as body and soul. This is just one all together. Yeah. Human yes. being. So we are right. one and we have to also remember that one works with the other. This is just exactly. holistic approach to the problem Perfect. and we can work top down. So basically we are thinking about something and our body goes better, but we can also go bottom up. So when we are not feeling so great, we can do ourselves, we can do for ourselves something physically mm -hmm. with our body and getting some fulfilling emotions from that. Right. So a uh, very important thing. Uh, uh, I would say a short summary of whatever we said. Guys, remember that the feelings you might have inside you, uh, they are mutual to many people now. Uh, if you feel, if you are feeling lonely, if you are feeling sad, if you are feeling anxious, if you are feeling angry, right? So you have some number of negative emotions in you. You are not the only one. This is important to understand it. You are not different. It's nothing wrong with you. I think it's okay to be mad sometimes. Of course. You know, and to crush something. Of course, something sometimes you need to be. Yes. yes. And these emotions, uh, they are natural. I mean, we are human. We are not machines. We are not computers. So we have these emotions. So we were talking about this acknowledgement, which is so important. Yeah. Um, yes. And I wanted to, to go farther that way. Um, 
some of the students um, uh, they cannot recognize or maybe sometimes they are scared um, at some point when they feel very sad and mm -hmm. they are thinking maybe I'm already depressed maybe I have a depression mm. because I do not want to get up from bed I don't want to eat my favorite food nothing is bringing any more joy into my life and um, I noticed that many people uh, you know coming from so many different continents so many different countries so many different cultures they might um, feel negative thoughts about asking for professional help when we are talking about professional health we are talking about yeah. psychologists psychiatrists psychotherapists someone who has a professional knowledge about our mental well-being um could could you give us some kind of a tip when it's a moment because actually i wanted to add something because there are like two types of people right when you're feeling bad uh, right. when you're feeling sad there is two options the first one i don't know what's wrong with you i'm just scared to feel and you know to accept that i'm feeling bad and the second type of people like i'm i'm, I'm feeling sad oh my god i'm having a depression so you know these people are giving the diagnosis to themselves and this is another huge... don't read the diagnosis on the internet yes. they will tell you you have a cancer <laughs> um yeah but but being like uh if we can get some practical overview on that um when there is a moment in a young person life uh, and in, in your, you know, uh, well-being when there is a time to ask for help. Hmm. Because sometimes there is a moment that you are sad and as you, as you said, we can talk to a friend, we can talk to a parent, we can talk to someone and this is giving us a relief, we feel better afterwards. But there are some stages uh, when this is not helping anymore. Yes, this is uh, quite of a big question. So I will try to, to do it in, in parts. So first of all, Justyna, thanks a lot for drawing a beautiful picture of uh, depression. All you said is actually pretty much most of the symptoms. Right. When you feel sad, and you feel sad most of the days, through almost whole days. So this is very important, especially now in the, in the fall, when we are having also this um, so-called seasonal uh, affect yeah season seasonal affective uh, disorder so basically seasonal depression we can call it yeah. quite unfortunate but yeah let, let's let's stick to that name for today and also anastasia y you made a great point i have to admit about recognizing all of this and doing something with it there is also third group of people who do recognize but try to put it as we say in polish mm -hmm. under the carpet so it yeah. just goes away everything is fine yeah. i'm so happy this is very often something that happens and we as friends also have to be quite aware of the situation again the name of the game is change so if someone was let's say zero level on on his hair's emotions was just normal no ups no downs a person and we see that all of the sudden this person is wow so happy it could be also a symptom of struggling with depression or depression alike problems you're trying like to hide mania. it yeah exactly it up. not necessarily many already because now we are going really far where we don't <laughs> go today where we won't go today like covering but like up. covering okay. so i'm so great look at me because of course we are facing possible problem in our life and we want to put it aside i mean i think many of us know the situations like we are feeling that something is wrong with our body and then we say ah no it's nothing it'll be okay mm -hmm. okay and sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't so we have to be careful not to ignore our feelings not to put it just aside just to observe it because with flu it will develop or it will not mm -hmm. with depression of course there is this possible way but if we continue ignoring we yeah. won't see that it develops. So I would say the, the question you asked firstly was when to call a he for, her, for help. Yeah. If you have this question, should I call for help? It's the funny. answer is yes. Yeah. So this is plain simple. And this pretty much concerns most of the mental diseases or mental conditions we are facing. If there is a concern, should I call for help? Yes, you should. Do I need it? I don't know. This will come up later. So this you will see once calling for this help. The general suggestion I have, there is not all of us need psychotherapy. Not all of us need psychological help. 
all of us could benefit from that. Mm -hmm. So in the worst case scenario, the person will visit the specialist two, three, maybe four times, right. of course, investing some money behind it, but will get some hints to develop his herself. herself. Mm -hmm. So it will be always beneficial, not always necessary. So, okay. So the deeper question, when it is necessary. To make it really simple for all of, all mm -hmm. of us, I would say there are three basic symptoms, not to dwell on how many hours should I sleep, how long, how often should I feel sad. Of course, it is there, but to make it like a first wake up call. If you have mostly negative thoughts about yourself, if you have mostly negative thoughts about your future, and if you have mostly negative thoughts about the world around you, this is really serious sign, then go. Mm -hmm. So this is a very important thing. If negative thoughts are coming to your mind more often than any other thoughts, and they are concerning yourself, mm -hmm. future, and the world around you, this is really a, a very, very severe signal that you should go and seek for help. Yeah, I would say this is the simplest answer I can give because all yeah. the rest is becoming easy to blur, easy to question, easy to wonder. Very important thing as well. Also, get back to the knowledge you have about yourself. If every autumn, every fall, you experience some mood problems, okay. This is lack of sun. Well, yeah, number of Most symptoms. Probably. Yeah. Lack of sun for sure puts in it. So, but if this is your nature, if this is something that happens to you, <coughs> that happens to you most of the falls, most of the years, mm -hmm. okay, just wait, it will go, it will go itself. But if there is something on top, or if it is more difficult than usually, or you are just too young to, to recognize mm -hmm. whether it's been happening prior to this year, it's always good to ask for help. It could be in a very safe situation of the family, of friends, that would be the first stop. However, I have to make a very, very important remark because us as friends, we have this awful tendency to answer, don't worry. You will be fine. It will yes. go away. I mean, you are such a positive person. Mm -hmm. You will handle it with no problem. I mean, who else if not you? You'll make it, I mean, Right. You will make it even success yourself. Right. Don't do it, please. What it is actually, it's telling to the person, your feelings don't matter yeah, to me. Ignore yes. them. Yes. It's ignoring the feelings. So don't do it, please. This is a very important thing. Although people, they do it because, uh, because they love us. They, they want something good for us. But of course, remember, friends or parents are not uh, psychologists. They, they are not professional. That is, that is a beautiful romantic assumption you made that they do it because <laughs> they love us. Unfortunately, <laughs> they do it because they are helpless. So uh -huh. usually when someone comes to us with a very difficult question of psychological or emotional or very personal matter, whatever it could be, it mm -hmm. could be dealing with many problems. Uh, we, of course, it's culturally different. So I also assume that uh, some of our students who are from very different cultures yep. might have different experience in that aspect. So we also have to be aware, how does it work in my culture? Is it relevant for my culture? But in many, many cases, we are being trained that way by our parents. So sometimes when the child comes to a parent with the, I don't know, uh, some bruises on, on, mm -hmm. on, on elbows, on arms, wherever they are. The parent, the child is crying. The parent very often says, why are you crying? Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the grown up parent, nothing happened because the grown up parent knows that these few bruises will fade away right. in a couple of days. But for the child, if the child is crying, something has happened. Mm -hmm. It is important. It is a pain. So the same with our friends, when they are coming to us and they are telling us, I'm in pain. Don't tell them, oh, no, it's okay. Everything will be fine. You will, you will, you will handle it somehow. Firstly, listen, mm -hmm. let the person talk. It's not like everyone coming to us is, is expecting some sort of golden Solutions, standard, yeah. mm -hmm. golden solution. Exactly. Firstly, they want to talk, talk, listen, listen with attention, ask some questions, try to dig out, be empathetic. And then actually we can try to think of some solutions or we can just show empathy and tell them how sorry we are that they are struggling mm -hmm. so much.
and maybe this is the moment for advice have you considered seeing a specialist university provide university provides one mm -hmm. you can find one on the free market you can talk to parents you can talk to friends maybe they can someone they know someone who they could uh, advise because they have positive experience and so on and so forth there is a plenty of ways to deal with that with it but very important element and i know because we discussed it a little bit prior to the life is shame so also yeah. many of us are dealing with shame of asking for help mm -hmm. yes. because again we've been talking about specific help and that that's the subject now about asking for help about mental problems however we are generally quite mm -hmm. hesitant to ask for help yeah Very because i'm scared i'm showing my weakness exactly i'm lower than you if i'm asking you for help exactly. is that true that it is shame to ask for help. We have questions coming. I just, you know, I didn't want to interrupt. Th th that's very good, actually. Uh, so soon we are going to read them. Is it shameful to ask for help? How do you think? Of course not. Yeah. This is, this is not true. You, you, you can ask for help. And here, guys, I'm sorry, I have to add a very practical tip. Not all of you know it. I don't know why. Are you reading our website? I, I want to tell you that university is helping you to get a professional help with a very low uh, finances from your side. And it's not a shame to go and ask for help. If you will go into our website, uh, we have a special space there for uh, actually psychological help. And university made an arrangement for our students. They can use a psychological help with one of the private clinics. Uh, by the way, guys, remember that three first visits are free of charge for you. So you're not paying anything. University is going to pay for you. You can you can check. Yeah, as we said, you can check if if I need prior help or maybe not. Maybe it's just all to maybe something else that could be sorted with, within these three, four first meetings. But if it is something more important, you are just going to benefit from these meetings. And our students, they have a special discounts there. So as well, don't be scared. You, you don't have to be a millionaire, okay? Uh, to, to take care of your own health. And if you will need any assistance on that from the side of university, even financial assistance, believe me, guys, we will never turn back on you. There are so many people here that are happy to help you on that too. Uh, just don't be ashamed and ask. Yes. I, I'll just add one thing because you said, Justina, Justina yourself, that we are very often ashamed and this is the sign of showing weakness if we need to ask yeah. for help. And it is. But it is okay. It is, but we are allowed to be weak yeah. sometimes. Yeah. So let's also don't forget that the fact that I'm weak today doesn't mean that I'm going to be weak in two weeks, a month, mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. So we are all different. And the fact that today I'm experiencing something that could be and maybe is weakness doesn't mean that I'm weak as a whole person. Yeah. Think about it the way how, and of course this is matter of, of development nowadays as well but if we think about disabilities we used to say about disabled disabled person now we say about person with disability because the fact that someone has a disabled i don't know eye ear leg arm mm -hmm. doesn't make him or her disabled less as worthy. a whole person yeah, and less this worthy. is only just this part that yeah. is not fine at this moment yeah. some of these abilities are being treated and people are getting back to some sort of uh, better health and the same is with with mental health we are sometimes having disability this is mental disability and we feel ashamed because this is something that can be seen and also because of the culture well there this is a huge cultural difference between between countries how we treat mental mentally ill people oh, yes. so this is very important part also to see it, how it goes with the culture which 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 we come from but uh, also with the weakness and disability what i like to mention and i think this is something that could work for for our our viewers listeners is would you think ashamed if you have a flu or diabetes or any other let's say bodily uh, difficulties no most of us would say no no, I just, I just go to doctor and ask him for medicine. And this is a condition. Uh, of course, there is not always medicine. And for flu, there is no medicine either. Right. <laughs> just flu medicine is stay in bed for, for a week. Days. Exactly. <laughs> However, this is not best medicine for depression, but not mixing the subjects. So basically, there are some conditions where there is no flu and uh, no where is no treatment or no instant treatment. But again, if you feel ashamed, 
it's good to ask ourselves the question, would I be ashamed if I have a flu? Would I be ashamed if I have, I don't know, diabetes? Or would I be ashamed if I have my back problems? No, I would actually use it as an excuse very often. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> Let's don't use our disabilities, problems, difficulties as, as an excuse. Let's treat all the tasks we have to do with respect. And when we may conduct something, let's do it. And if we can't, we can't. Let's accept our weakness. There are solutions to it that we can use. Perfect. Uh, yes, we're going to go back to the questions. I just wanted to ask, do you agree with the fact that sometimes people from different cultures, right? If we take Americans, they're not ashamed at all. I mean, they're not scared in the majority of cases, right? But when it comes to s on other cultures, sometimes we're ashamed of that because, okay, when we were children, like our parents, they had, you know, cold, they felt bad, like the arm, the leg or something. But I think it's a rare situation when parents show to the children that, you know, I'm feeling bad, I'm going to go to the psychologist and I'm going to try to, to, to yeah. do something with yeah, that. Deal with so it. We don't know what this is because we never observed anything like this when we were children. So this is probably another uh, point why people are ashamed of this sometimes because they just didn't see anything like this. Of course, upbringing adds to it. But also there is a certain moment in our life and I would encourage most of our students to use this opportunity of being student to actually take this step in our lives mm -hmm. where we can acknowledge that our upbringing, well, not always gave us perfect conditions, that our parents did some mistakes, as most likely many of us will do the mistakes having our own kids. So yes, they made some mistakes, but now we are becoming grown-ups. I mean, I feel I already became. So things depends on us. So guys. also we have to take some responsibility and uh, it's not as easy as just Wazarski talks solves all those all that sort of problems. We've been brought up with some limitations. Yes, we've been brought up brought up with some beliefs that this is uh, shameful, this is taboo, this we don't talk about, this we don't touch, and yeah. so on and so forth. But being very straightforward, we have two possibilities: live with these beliefs that are actually dragging us down, or to make a change. Mm -hmm. It's always up to us. It's not like any psychologist has a magic wound yeah. which will change anything. The change is always on client's side. Mm -hmm. There is no other way. Mm -hmm. And we have to take responsibility for our life. There is no other solution. As simple as that. So we have to decide whether we stick what uh, we've been taught as, as, as kids or we want to start, well, I would say... Mm, more colorful, more mm -hmm. potential for life of ourselves, taking yeah. all that we have in hand. We have limitations, we have to accept the limitations, we have to acknowledge the limitations, but also we have a responsibility to see a potential. And whether we use this potential or not, it depends very much on us. Uh, we, exactly. we, we, we weren't born the same. We were born in different cultures, different families, with different wealth, with different education. Mm -hmm. And most, li most, li most likely up to now, we had very different circumstances we've been brought up. But all of our viewers, our Wazarski students, this levels us a little bit. From now on, on certain points, on certain level, we have very similar start and we can use our capabilities. We just have to acknowledge that there is a number of stuff I can do with myself, I can change. And fear mm -hmm. of change, also to be fair, I have to make a little remark, fear, fear of change is also natural because you've been actually used. We are all used to live the way we live till now. So change is a frightening situation. Is leaving your comfort zone. Is leaving your comfort zone. Right. Beautiful. But it's... Uh, it, it is scary. It 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 sound it's it looks scary on s or sounds scary on the beginning, but you know I heard a very interesting um, uh, example once that a uh, person going for a walk, okay, and you were walking and some kind of a pebble gets into your shoe, and this is just your choice if you want to have another ten kilometers walk with this pebble in your shoe, or you can stop, take it out and then walk farther so but no one else is going to take this pebble out guys if you're coming from a culture sorry where mama deal with every problem 
as we talk. This is a time when you are being an adult. So this pebble, you have to take it out if, if you want to sort anything in your life. Let's go to the questions. We have so many. Um, I think it is a very important thing that um, our wonderful student is asking, because here we're talking about how to deal with the situation when we're yeah. talking about ourselves. But this is a very important topic when I am feeling okay, but I have a friend, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a mama, a papa, whoever, who is feeling depressed. So the question is, um, how to, but how to help? Of course, listening is the best solution sometimes with attention, but how to help? Even saying sorry, we're, uh, okay, because, uh, but even saying how sorry we are is not true because we're not feeling the same. Could you give us some advice dealing with friends who are sharing with us their problems? Um, I uh, disagree a little bit with the uh, constatation that saying we are sorry it's not true because we don't feel the same. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true, we don't feel the same, mm -hmm. but we may be genuinely sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, empathy is called empathy. Yes, it is called empathy and uh, we are quite capable as well of mm -hmm. imagining somebody else's situation. Mm -hmm. So this is a very, very important thing. Let's not undermine our feelings and our empathy which we can give to the other person it's not not important it is important it is a very difficult question to and it's very difficult question to answer because i don't know the specific situation with this with this other person but what i would say i do that would be i think the easiest uh, mm -hmm. proof or, or maybe to make it also credible i actually try to make sure that this other person is aware that I am available for her or him. So whenever something happens, I am there for you. I will be there with you. You are not alone. You are not alone on this. You are not alone with struggling with this problem. I may not be able to help you with all the situation you are facing, Yes. but I may help you with something. What is I can help you with? Oh, there is nothing you can help me with. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hear what you're saying. I hear that you feel helpless so I do that understand you see that no you're facing this issue. yeah no option you see no option you see nothing that i can help you with but if something comes up to your mind i'm there for you and unfortunately or fortunately we have to walk the talk so we have to show this person that we are really for her or him so whenever he she calls we should reply this call if we can't pick it up at the moment we should call as soon as possible to also provide proof that we are because the person also at the very beginning my maybe hear us maybe listen to us but in order to internalize our promise it might take some time mm -hmm. and trust me ensuring person i'm there for you i will help you i hear you are struggling it will help sooner or later also let's don't be afraid at certain moment in time and that depends very much on the relationship we are with with this person mm -hmm. and how this person is doing doing psychologically in general but also at some point we might be quite straightforward and tell the person i'd love to help you i've been trying so hard for x y z number of but days weeks whatever but i have only limited possibilities mm -hmm. i see that you are struggling and i will be always for you but you have to decide whether you have to change it or not i understand you feel weak now but this is your decision the first step I go, I provide, whatever, we can We can try to arrange it. There is a number of help we can provide, little steps to help this person to get there, but this person has to decide our, uh, him or herself. And the problem I sense also in this question is another one. I'm feeling bad because, because I, I cannot can. help my yes, friend. Exactly. This is something that happens, but also we have to see our limitations. Friendship is not an ocean without end, and even ocean has some end, depending from which side we are looking yep. at it. We might not see it, but it is there. So we have our limitations as well. And someone could be so sad in so difficult position that won't hear us. We have to accept the freedom of choice of the other person. If the other person doesn't want our help or doesn't want it now, mm -hmm. we can continue to provide possibility of our help and accept it will come later or it will never come. Yeah. We will be still good friends. Um, I would like to as well maybe add into uh, into this something that um, uh, sometimes as well we have to acknowledge when is our limit 
and that maybe the trouble or the problem, the issue that our friend is talking about is something we cannot take on our arms yeah. uh, as a burden because this is something we cannot uh, sort out and this might be a trap uh, because it might bring us down too. There are some moments that uh, when someone is down, maybe having a depression or maybe having an, I don't know, let's assume something, uh, alcohol addiction or drug addiction, medication addiction or anything else that might be already, uh, that, that definitely demands, not might, it demands um, professional assistance. I feel that as well, it is very important for a friend, uh, you know, not to carry this burden with yourself. Yeah, because and, and to feel bad after all too. Like yeah, the because there, there are things you will not be able to sort out, definitely, but you should not feel guilty, you know, about this. It, there is a right time when you should say to your friend, you need a professional help. Yes, I will provide to you. I will even go with you for the first visit or I would I will find for you the best, uh, I don't know, the best professional help. But I think sometimes uh, some people, they are feeling obliged, you know, uh, to do, uh, to help you, but actually you can't. Very true. But also I would like to separate still addiction from, from the subject of today's conversation. Right. It is a little bit different story. Of course, it very often coexists, but let's put addictions uh, on, on Our the Our student doesn't uh, have an addictions, right? <laughs> no, I just wanted... I, I research, just research tends to differ. Yeah. Unfortunately, alcohol and drugs are one of the mm, substances we also use to improve our uh, well-being, let's call it, uh, during the pandemic, which is obviously a bad way to, to deal with it, because let's keep in mind that most of drugs and alcohol are depressants. They are making mm -hmm. us feel better instantly. For sure. But this is for a short period of time. Long term, it's always uh, increasing the, the symptoms of depression. It makes us feeling yeah. worse. One, one, one last sentence on this on the subject, closing it. We have with, another question. With, with acceptance. I just like to make a quite important remark here that, yes, we have to accept our limits and to remember that our limits, it's not us as a whole person. So when struggling with the guilt, we mm -hmm. may fail with the project of helping the, per the, the, the other mm -hmm. person and we might be not so great in providing this specific help to this specific person in this specific moment. Mm -hmm. But to refrain ourselves from the risk of, of, of feeling guilt, we might still say, OK, this is something I cannot do now. It doesn't mean that I'm not a good friend. We are a good friend. We mm -hmm. tried as hard as it was possible. Yes. The other person decided not to. The other person has also his uh, freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. End of the story. But still, try to be for these people. It's always important. And mm. um, I, I encourage you. You know, wanted to add that um, if you have the broken arm, you're not going to your friend to fix it, right? I mean, sometimes we just cannot do that. And I think this is the... Uh, well, we have two more. Okay, so um, I just wanted to, to, to say that, okay, like, for example, we have a best friend and sometimes you said about Google, you know, you can, you can Google uh, what to do with the depression and from Google it came out that you're pregnant even though you're a guy <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's impossible. It but happens. Yeah, but what I'm just saying is that sometimes can you do a bad thing if you want to help really badly and you're trying to help and you're like, you're going to be okay. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. But you literally, you just cannot because you're not, you know, if, if you're an economist, you cannot help people with a depression. And I think that's, that's the point here because uh, there is another question. What if sometimes you have to be so honest with a person, of course, with empathy, but you have to tell this person what he needs to hear and make him feel responsible and ready for the consequences. Very general. Very general. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, very general. I wonder, if, well, and it's general question the answer would be yes or no so quite difficult uh, what was it really to how to say no or how to yeah so, sometimes you, you you need to be so honest with the person of course with the empathy I think that you know sometimes you just have to probably a guy wants to say like this is enough or, or, or you have to face it I don't know I, that's what I understood from, okay and from the consequences of, of, of your actions right uh, uh, actually, we do not know what exactly is the situation, so well, it's hard to refer to it. Yeah, but still, if trying to, to guess a little bit wh yeah. what could be behind it, I would say mm, we have to remain, we have to keep our boundaries. This is important because, first of all, 
we have to take care of our own health, of our own security, of our mm -hmm. own situation. So this is the first point. We have to remain our boundaries. The only point is we have to do it in a respectful manner. Mm -hmm. So even if someone is annoying, because it could be annoying. I mean, if you've been trying for weeks, mm -hmm. listen, I'm with you and I know you are sad, it's difficult and so on and so forth. And maybe psychologist, no, 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 no. I mean, it could be annoying. We are not professionals in these situations. So uh, yes, we can be quite straightforward, but just let's try to be respectful. So this is, I think, quite mm -hmm. short answer to the, to the um. question. So yes, we can set the boundaries, make it in a respectful way. Let's try not to be emotional. Let's try not to be angry. Just saying, listen, I mean, I've been trying as much as I can. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm getting to my limits. Please, I mean, here are, here are the numbers where you can find psychologists. Sorry, I, I have no more strength to deal with this. Actually, when it comes, like, just a little uh, question that I think is very important when it comes to the boundaries. Sometimes, okay, what to do if you see the person who is very important to you, like the best friend or the classmate or, or someone you whoever, love, just just someone you love, and you see that he or she is struggling from some some stuff, right? Some emotional stuff, and he or she accept this, but he or she doesn't want any help. So, like you know, closes for is it? okay is it a right decision to knock to this you know to this close house and like i'm gonna help you i'm gonna help you i want to help you i'm gonna help you or it can make things worse i don't know okay <laughs> uh what i do with friends when something like that happened because obviously with my personal relationships i'm not psychologist then this relationships would be unbearable would be very difficult to man mm -hmm. maintain and probably would be less fulfilling for both sides so what i do actually I say, okay, you know, I mean, I've been, I've been trying to talk to you about this. I see that this is not the best moment, that maybe you're not ready to, to, to talk about the subject. So remember, I'm there, I'm there for you whenever you're ready. I think it's even harder than, you know, to, to help all the time when a people, when a person doesn't want help, it's even harder yeah. to just stay. Yeah, of course. And sometimes things will be very visible to us that this person is struggling with ABC and we might even have solution because of, I don't know, books, mm -hmm. experience, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but the person will be still like, oh, no, no, I'm fine. This is not my problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. I just expressed my concern. I see that maybe this is not the right moment to talk about it. No worries, I'm there for you okay. if you ever change your mind. Um, I think very, very nice thought um, from, from Nikita. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually it's not a question. It's, it's just a thought shared by the student is, uh, it is really important not to help when you feel bad after this. It is like the first ad. Uh, you need to help when you have resources because it can break your relationship. So simply acknowledging your boundaries, what we what we talked, acknowledging the boundaries how, of how the much people yeah, how much you can do and what you can't do. Yeah, and then another uh, thing. Yes, we have another question. Yeah. Sometimes I feel that I'm cold hearted to my problems, whereas I don't underestimate problems of other people. Is such an attitude towards yourself is oh my god. You are a man, you have to be strong, or is it a part of my character and this is a natural behavior of some people? Again, uh, I acknowledge my limitations. I don't know. Some people and men indeed more often than women uh, have this belief, hope, uh, tendency, desire to be strong 100% time. Is it natural? I don't think it is. Is it evolutionarily uh, explainable? Yes, it is because it used to be like that for ages. So people used to live that way. That man was the food provider. He was always Hunting. strong, never complaining. Yeah, and he lived 40 years. <laughs> I mean, let's also remember that life expectancy is exploding. Yes. I mean, it's much, much longer now than it was ever before. So things are changing. Evolution, even if explains something or can give some hints why it is so, it doesn't mean it has to be so. And in other researches, we can see that men can really have this desire to be strong, to be handy, to be, and I don't know, able to... Hard, like, you know, yeah, doesn't exactly. express any emotions. On the other hand, in the same research, women say, no, that's not what we want. Yes. We want the man to be this, this, this and that. And of course, there is a number of both genders which will say, yes, I want the guy to be let's say traditional, just mm -hmm. to make it, make it soft. So uh, we have to reflect ourselves in the culture that we've been brought up with, in the culture that we live in, and actually who we would like to be. 
because of course culture might put some limitations on us but yeah. i'm sure that in the most rigid cultures they are still very sensitive men and they are still very strong women so what i really don't like about that sort of segregation I, and i know it happens so yeah. to the question uh there is no such thing as natural necessity mm -hmm. for to men for men to be always strong even the strongest men even the strongest vikings sometimes had some fragile some sensitive moments but also we have to remember when putting such uh, expectations on men we might have problem with treating women because if i am the man and i have to be strong then is the woman allowed to be strong as well or is it frightening to me so we are getting into very complex discussion yeah. how the gender Problems. how sex yeah. can oh, can influence gonna, our behavior make it as our next Se topic separate of, topic of, of, yeah. yes yeah. of the discussion but um just to add a little bit more science to that i knew the research is that you know because we all said that soul and body is one thing so when guys are very cold-hearted they don't express any emotions they just end up with a you know heart attacks in like 40 40 years old and this is the research that was made i don't remember like a couple of years ago right so we are women right here i think that every single man every single health like everybody can be weak at some point of the life and it's so i don't want to use this word but it's stupid a little bit to think that i have to be strong all the time because of this you know stereotypical pictures that we have in some cultures still nowadays yeah it, it is amazing it is amazing we do have this tendency to fall into the straps that we have to be this this or that because it's not only about strength it's about success it's yeah. about money it's about kids it's about whatever you take into consideration so, i mean in, into consideration many women as well have this embedded in them uh belief that they have to have kids till H X mm -hmm. Y Z again I mean or I have to uh, build a house and buy a car and do this and that at some certain age uh, I think we are again getting back to again to close a little bit yeah, on that. Please. so let's try not to allow others expectations to, to to make our lives I mean again let's take responsibility because on one hand we can look at yes. it from the perspective that somebody else's expectations are creating my life for God, I mean, this is yes. my life. I'm responsible for it. Exactly. So this is what I wanted to say. So we were talking about this awareness. Uh, so who am I? What, what is good for me? Okay. I'm feeling better when I'm emotional and, and fragile or I'm feeling better when I'm strong and self-sufficient, right? Or, and taking responsibility uh, over our own life because we have one life, right? I mean, some of us believe that no, but okay, currently we have a one body, one life, and uh, we have to take a responsibility over what kind of life I want to live. Do I want to live as someone scenario and play a main role in someone's movie, or this is my scenario? Yeah, and it sounds very easy. There is, there is quite easy recipe to, to define when to fall into social influence or when to fall a little bit less know your values so we have to think what are our values so basically what are the things that we are the least open to negotiate that we are the least open to um i don't know change in our life and it cannot be broth or, or, or meat love it should be something yeah. important so we should actually find our values yeah. and knowing our values then we can decide where we enter other people into our life and when we limit these people out exactly. of it uh, uh our we technical team is letting us know that we should finish now <laughs> but let's no, what let's, about tolerance? but let's but let's do it We're five more <laughs> minutes guys you have to bear with us sorry camera guys you have to bear with us because we have uh one more question Could and I then one more thing that we yes. wanted to discuss uh, to close up today i'm so sorry but we have such an amazing guest such an interesting uh topic and i so think it's, it's not our fault yeah. it's just all about it's, our it's mine thank you no, very much no, you no, put no, it on no, no, my no. shoulders uh, yeah no. it's me no it's important to finish oh, a guilty it pleasure. Yeah, to finish it yeah it's a guilty pleasure uh yeah it's Let's outside of the topic it really is indeed and i think we will dedicate uh, one of our lazarski talks episode to that but and let's I'm, touch it yes and i'm in love with this topic it's like you know gender related and all this stuff do you agree that when women have problems they only want you to listen understand the situation and not waiting for solutions the opposite of men who's looking only for solutions first very interesting one i have to admit <laughs> yeah, indeed i mean 
I don't like it so much and I don't think that generally it is the truth but indeed there is this tendency that men more often than women it doesn't mean older men all the time yeah. but it does happen and it is visible in many many social researches that men do have this tendency to be a little bit more orientated on task mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and women are a little bit less orientated on task sometimes they more paying attention to a process that i would mm -hmm. say i mean it might sound far away process in that situation but yes men more often than women are orientated on tasks whilst women not so much so i hope it answers it uh, yes. straight away so we're gonna and change. also i think it's going it's going to change okay but yeah. we, i think we're i mean it's like generations yeah, yeah. Uh, it's important actually to to talk about relations and guys yeah this amazing idea to to go through it more deeply right idea. next time guys and we promise to you in in description of our meeting that we are going to discuss one more topic and because we have like limited seconds left let's uh let's talk about tolerance this is something that we started talking about last time and uh it is it is uh, i think important to uh, to discuss it uh mm, our students come currently from more than 60 different nationalities from all the continents all the countries all the skin colors, uh, religious, sexual orientations, diets, and anything else you can imagine. I know, I'm lecturer here. Right, I mean. loads of diversity, right? And these people, they they come to this to this place, to Warsaw. Uh, they come to Wolfarski University, and they all have to bear with each other at one spot. And um, so my question is actually, how to live in peace how to enjoy the diversity something that you were not used to before and what goes with it if i was raised in a country by my parents that tolerance was not very much in fashion okay how as an adult person making my own choice i can become a tolerant person mm -hmm. yeah where pierogi in fashion in this family <laughs> no. <laughs> Are they in fashion now for this person who you imagined in this question? I guess to some extent, because in Poland uh -huh. we do eat pierogi. Uh, obviously it's a joke, but I'm sure that all the foreign students who we, whom we have uh, at Wazarski University, they've noticed that Poland is a different country than the one that they come from. It has its strengths, it has its weaknesses, it yes. has its opportunities, and it has its threats. So it's a complete swat of Poland which we make to do, which we can to do, which we can do. Uh, I would say my easiest recipe for tolerance is the very, very simple answer and very, very simple question that won't work for all of us, but pretty much my freedom ends when your freedom begins. Mm -hmm. And this naturally um, has in itself a little bit of empathy a little bit of respect as well mm -hmm. but how to deal with different uh, set of values than than home country well best is to know my own my own values value which are really my own not family traditions not country traditions mm -hmm. because let's think about living in foreign country and that was my approach as well when i was living abroad let's think about living in foreign country as a new opening i mean we came to this new place we have new friends, we have new apartment, we have new school, new language around us. Mm -hmm. What is really important for me? What I want to really keep in myself from my upbringing, from mm -hmm. my country. And okay, this could be values very different from my uh, next, next student sitting next to me. What to do with this? Well, we may coexist. We do coexist at Wazarski. Why can't we accept? tolerate first it's of all so tolerate why topic actually yeah i mean the topic about. is so wide so it, it's literally impossible to answer yeah. in the number in the number of minutes we have left before ending as far as i understood but i would say the easiest is um, to think about our freedom also has its limits and yeah. we can have whatever opinion we have but why would I imply this opinion on other person? And that goes both ways, because sometimes, mm -hmm. of course, we can see the fact that majority is pressing minority. And then we see that minority is pressing majority. And minority always 
I would say deserves special attention because minority is also what shows us differences, mm -hmm. what shows us how we can develop, shows us different direction than the mm -hmm. majority used to go around. So we have to accept this mi minority. Mm -hmm. It's bringing new things to us, but also the minority should remember that the majority might require some time to see mm -hmm. it the same way they do. So I would say this is the simplest way to think about it. Respect, respect, and one more time, respect. We all need freedom. And most of us, I hope that all of us were born free and we would like to maintain uh, that way. And uh, let's try to make the best of our lives. And as long as mm -hmm. we think about uh, in a positive egoism, that I want to make mm -hmm. life the best, mm -hmm. not in the expense of other person, but just want to make the best what is what is in it for me yes that would be a great recipe respect and clear focus i want to make myself best person better person today than i was yesterday and better tomorrow than i was today most likely it will mm -hmm. work to some extent mm, and i deeply do believe that uh, all of our viewers have have tolerance embedded in their in their life values i can't imagine intelligent people as all of our students who decided are, to study abroad who decided to study at wazarski not being tolerant i think uh, there is no place for intelligent person not have um, I would say the privilege of being tolerant because being tolerant very mm -hmm. often could be a privilege. It shows how I can be open, how I can be courageous as well. Mm -hmm. Tolerance takes lots of courage. And uh, let's imagine that um, this is something that really could, could bring up in our lives great, great value. Actually, I think this was an amazing summary of whatever we talked today. And I think all these things actually I combined all together. Um, I have a question from myself. We're on recording, we're on live, so you don't have any wow. option. Are you coming back to our studio to Lazarski Talks? Honestly, I wanted to invite myself <laughs> to talk about the tolerance. We're not letting you go. To talk about tolerance. More. We literally do not have time and Thanks we literally lot. have a lot of yeah. things to talk about. And we have questions, questions, questions. So we're not letting you go. <laughs> and we're going to meet here. Certainly again. not. So, and, and as we said, these are very broad and uh, topics. Uh, definitely, we can discuss it uh, yeah. other time uh, because we heard that research says that one hour is a time when our students can focus like fully on whatever yeah, we, we were talking. we actually had to finish 20 minutes. I believe in attention span of 20 minutes, actually. Right, yeah. exactly. So, guys, let's talk about it next time. And if our amazing guest is going to agree and he will feel tempted, then we can prolong this discussion next time. As always, we invite you to our student help desk and to Lazarski University Instagram and there for the next three days you will be able to let us know give us our feedback on this meeting but as well choose the topics you would like to continue next time you can choose as well our guests for the next meetings we encourage you to do so we promise a prize for the best uh, for the yes. best comments and from my per uh, just you know my humble opinion i think the guy who was who is really nervous about the friend or we don't know who is this but we had four questions from this guy about the, that, that the close answered. person wow. yes yeah, this he, is the you same know person. we just put it all together but he he was very interested in another person uh, will being so I'm voting for that <laughs> yeah uh, so I think that uh, we all know now I'm sorry not our guest because we I can was see supposed the chat. to pick one. Oh <laughs> yeah so we, we helped a lot in that I'm so sorry <laughs> but Annas actually was making uh, so many comments he had so many questions most of them actually they were covered yes. uh, so I think uh, it would be fair to say Annas just uh, you can pick up from the Lazarski University your presence your presence your box of gifts from Lazarski you can take from the security is a surprise it is so a surprise. we hope you will be happy and you will let surprised us, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. you will let us know uh, on instagram what you have got there and what uh, what you liked so much uh, maybe we can even make a challenge to make uh, i mean i some sort of assume that the mark could be there so maybe you can make a challenge that the the, the, the uh, person who wants the prize uh -huh. will make some well-being picture with this things that well, are in the 
back. Wow, that's Anna, why... that's a challenge for you. Do you accept it? We will know later. <laughs> you on. don't have any choice. So, guys, so sorry for prolong prolonging the meeting, but I think it was only to our all benefit yes. here. It was so amazing. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for taking part. We hope that all of you uh, liked it, and I hope that our guests uh enjoy already it confirmed too. i loved it i loved it so much honestly i think this is a very important matter so i'm very happy that you brought it up i assume that was your voting as well who made uh, what made the subject coming up so uh thank you for being open having the subject thank you for having me all the warm words that's always very nice so yeah great yeah, thanks a lot thanks. so thank you guys thank you bye so bye much. and see you in a one week time Cheers. bye 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 thank you